I built this UHF TV antenna as an experiment, not really intending to use it for real. It works surprisingly well, so I'm going to keep playing around with it by setting it up in my attic. I'll put a link in the description for the antenna plans that I used, and here's a quick shot of the dimensions. I'll also include links for all the materials and tools used in this video. The cable run that I'm going for is about 150 feet long. After some quick testing, it became really obvious that I need an amplifier due to signal loss in such a long length of cable. I bought this powered preamp made by Channel Master. It has really solid all-metal construction, which appears to be totally sealed. It's designed for both indoor and outdoor use. You'll want to install the preamp as close to the antenna as possible. The antenna in port connects directly to the ballon on your antenna. The second port that's marked DC power and out serves two purposes. This is an input for DC power, which powers the preamp, and it's also an output for the RF received by the antenna. This is a cool design because it means you can power the preamp from the far end of your cable run, where you will most likely have access to power. The preamp comes with this splitter that manages sending power to the amp and receiving the RF signal. This splitter has a switch for low or high gain settings, allowing you to select the amplification that best suits your particular situation. The output of the splitter simply goes to your TV or tuner box. Before running any cable, I tested to make sure that it was going to work, and that everything looked good with this amplified setup. I brought a small TV up to my attic and tested the antenna in various locations and decided that the best spot was going to be up here in the rafters. I have some HVAC ducting on the wall that I definitely want to steer clear of. I kind of lucked out that on the other side of my attic there's a 2 inch conduit that drops down into my basement. I'm going to run my cable down there and across the rafters on the other side of the attic. I'm lowering a throw weight down the conduit with some paracord so I can pull the cable down, hopefully without too much issue. The conduit comes out in a slightly awkward spot in the drop ceiling of my basement. The hardest part was just finding where it was. Now that I have a rope going through the conduit, I've set up my cable on a dowel suspended by a ladder. I'm tying a simple knot around the cable but leaving a decent amount of surface area to wrap electrical tape around the rope and cable. The wire pull was a combination of me pushing the cable down the pipe while a helper helped from the basement side. Unwinding the loose cable on the ladder was kind of a pain. I've done this before with cable that was on an actual spool, and that worked a lot better. We got it done though. Having radios to communicate was a big help. Back down in the basement, I opened up the ceiling tiles so I can run the cable to my utility room. This didn't take very long. I took my time to avoid snagging the cable on anything that was sharp. This coax is solid copper RG6Q cable. The Q stands for quad shield because internally it has two layers of foil and two layers of metal braid shielding. This is intended to be used in environments where there is nearby EMF that can affect the signal in your cable. That likely doesn't apply to my situation, but I like that the quad shield cable is a bit beefier. All the big box stores seem to mostly carry copper clad steel coax. It might not make a difference, but I felt more comfortable going with a cable that has a solid copper center conductor. My thought was if I'm going to the effort to run the cable, I only want to do it once, so I went with a premium cable that I bought off of Amazon. I'll drop a link in the description below. So I have my cable loosely laid out where I want it, but not secured down yet. I bought a 4-pack of light-duty aluminum mounting brackets that are for an antenna mast. I want to mount the antenna before I start cutting and securing the coax. After some leveling, I got the mount positioned pretty well. I didn't account for not having much vertical clearance, so mounting the antenna on the pole was a little tricky. I think a shorter length of pole would have worked better for my situation, but I managed to get it on there. The aluminum mounts that I'm using are pretty decent, but they definitely are light duty. I wouldn't trust it with a heavier antenna, and I probably wouldn't use them outside. Here's how the antenna looks fully mounted. I cut off the temporary stand that I had attached to it previously. I like the design of this preamp. It's really solid construction and comes with a nice mounting bracket that's even more heavy duty than the mounts that I'm using for the antenna. The two connectors are located at the bottom, which seems like a good call for trying to protect it against water when being installed outside. Okay, let's cut the cable and put some connectors on there. I'm going to demonstrate how to prepare the cable and put the connectors on at my workbench where I have better lighting. Here are all the tools that I'm using. Just a reminder that everything will be listed in the video description. 
I'm using this F-type crimper and connectors made by Klein. The connectors support both RG6 and RG6 quad cable. Just a reminder that I'm using quad cable in this video. I'm going to take my coax cutters and square off the end of the cable. It helps to straighten the cable before cutting it. After cutting, you want to squeeze the cable back to the original round shape since cutting it turns into a bit of an oval. Now I'll use this cable stripping tool to put the necessary cuts at the end of the cable. You want to make sure that the 6 is at the top of the black cutting block. This indicates that we are using RG6 cable. The cable lines up with this little black stopper on the other side. Note that it's fine to cut off a little bit extra and just trim the center conductor at the end. The stripper just clamps onto the cable and you can gently spin it around a few times to make two separate cuts. The first cut removes everything down to the center conductor. The second cut is farther back and only slices the jacket, leaving the shielding and dielectric intact. Since I'm using quad cable, there are four layers of shielding. The first layer is a metal braid, under that is foil, and another layer of metal braid, and then finally a layer of foil. We need to fold back all the strands of metal braid and cut off the foil underneath. The stripper tool has this sort of velcro part that you can use as a comb to gently fold back the strands of metal braid. Then I'll use an X-Acto knife to carefully cut and peel the foil. Now we can fold back the second layer of metal braid and use the X-Acto knife again to cut off the last piece of foil, which exposes the white dielectric. It's important to keep all these little strands of braid away from the center conductor. When putting the connector on, you need to pass the center conductor through the hole and then press the connector down firmly on top of the braid that's folded back on the cable. Looking at the end of the connector, you should see the white dielectric pushed up against the hole that the center conductor protrudes from. The center conductor should not be touching any part of the connector housing. Now we can use the crimp tool to permanently crimp the connector to the cable. There's a hole in the tool that the center conductor slides in to keep it protected while you squeeze firmly down on the tool's handle. Now I'll give the center conductor a trim so that it doesn't stick out too far. You want to have a little sticking up past the end of the connector. Okay, back up in the attic, we can start hooking things up. This cable that goes down to my basement connects to the DC power and out connector. Power will be sent from the basement up to the preamp through this cable, and the antenna RF signal will go down the same cable into the basement. I really like this design because it means if this was installed outside, you wouldn't need to have any additional power cables go into the preamp. Now we can connect a short length of cable to the ballon on the antenna to the antenna in connector on the preamp. Alright, this is looking pretty good. I fastened the cable down off camera and left a little extra length in a loop on the side in case I end up needing to make adjustments. Be sure to follow your local wiring code if you decide to take on a project like this and know that I'm not an expert. Okay, down the conduit and into the basement we go. These cable clips are great. I have some that are made for a single cable and others that are made for two cables. Long ago I tried these other clips that you nail down. They're super junky and I definitely don't recommend this style. I'll include a link to the good ones in the description below. Alright, my cable run is done. Let's check out the device that I'm going to plug this into. This is called an HD Home Run. It's made by a company called Silicon Dust. It's a little box with several tuners in it and it lets you stream your live TV content on your local network. This HD Home Run is called the Flex 4K. It has four internal tuners, two of which are capable of ATSC 3 in addition to the ATSC 1 that all four tuners support. ATSC 3 is the third generation of digital TV technology, sometimes referred to as next gen TV. As of 2024, the jury is still out on if ATSC 3 will actually become a thing or if it will get abandoned. Here is my full setup that I will eventually mount onto the wall. We have the preamp power supply here that goes to the right side of this special splitter. The cable on the left side of the splitter is the long cable that goes up to the antenna in the attic. The top of the splitter is what goes to your TV tuner. In this case, I'm connecting that to the input on my HD Home Run. Then you need to plug in Ethernet to put the HD Home Run on your local network. Note that it doesn't support Wi-Fi. I have the HD Home Run app on my iPhone. There's virtually no setup for this thing. It gets found automatically on the network and is ready to be used. You don't have to create any sort of account or anything. You can get system info about the HD Home Run in any browser by navigating to hdhomerun.local or you can use the local IP address on your network. You can view all the channels, set favorites, block channels, and view supported resolutions for each channel. It scans for channels automatically, but you can also kick off a manual scan. At the bottom here, you can see all the ATSC3 channels in my area. 
All the ones that say DRM are encrypted and can't be watched. Under tuner status, you can see what tuners are being used and what the signal strength is. This is super useful for fine tuning your antenna position to optimize for the best signal. I tried the HD Home Run apps on my iPhone, LG TV, and Roku Ultra. They work, but they aren't the greatest apps. The Roku app in particular is borderline unusable. It's buggy and missing features that are present on other supported platforms, but the biggest issue is playback interruption due to Roku's internal video player. I don't fault the HD Home Run for the playback issues, since I've read a fair amount of complaints about the Roku platform as being pretty unfriendly to developers. The HD Home Run app on my LG TV is much better, but it's very slow to navigate. This is possibly because my TV is about 5 years old. The iOS app is definitely the best in terms of features and performance. There's also a third-party app called Channels that is much better than any of the HD Home Run apps. Channels is a paid app on most platforms, but it's free on iOS. Sadly, Channels doesn't have a Roku app, which is a bummer because my Roku Ultra is my primary streaming device. I've seen several mentions of Plex having good support for integrating with HD Home Runs. I'm probably going to check that out in the future. If that sounds like something you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments and consider subscribing. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.